Well, yesterday, July 5th, 2020, I posted two videos that dealt with an accelerating rocket. In that situation, we had a rocket, you can think about it as a block, which is, uh, which is under the influence of a thrust, and the thrust makes the thing accelerate. So uh, I showed people how to uh, use the concept of uh, inertial relief uh, uh, slash uh, self-balancing uh, self balancing load in CATIA and the one, two, three rule slash isostatic uh, restraint in, in CATIA to solve those problems. But I want to I want to point out that uh, this is not uh, specific to particularly the isostatic and one two three rule are not uh, specific to the accelerating objects. Uh, it can be uh, it can be applied and it has to be applied in some situation to a static problem. Now here is the problem that I'm going to be modeling for you. It's a block. Dimensions are not uh, not relevant and uh, and uh, the it's being uh, compressed or, for example, being pulled on both sides with the same force, uh, uh, force F. Okay, you can pretend that this is a block that is sitting in a in a in a in an install machine, which is a tension uh, uh, tensile testing machine, uh, or a compressive uh, uh, in the compressive mode that is being loaded. Okay, so this is a static problem. In other words. Uh, uh, the F on the left side equal to F on the right side, and the object is in static equilibrium, equilibrium, except that nothing is fixed here. For example, uh, somebody may be applying uh, these two forces uh, on a block which is sitting uh, in the back of a truck, and the truck itself is moving at a, a constant speed, okay? Then uh, uh, there is no restraint. Okay, so I want to show you how to do this problem. Uh, by the way, very frequently, uh, the, very frequently, uh, particularly the first-time uh, first-time users uh, may solve the problem. This problem as clamping one end and applying a force F on the other. Now, although these these two problems are not strictly the same, okay, uh, strictly the same. But uh, you, you will get results which may be acceptable for some purposes, but it is not, it is not modeled, the problem is not modeled uh, the way it's presented to you, okay? Uh, right, for, for, think about this thing as a, a, piece of, a piece of steel which is floating in outer space and the two ends of it are subjected to a force, okay? That is not the same as being clamped at one end and uh, compressed at the other end. Okay, so uh, we're not we're not going to do it like this. So the process that we're going to do is uh, model the block, apply the forces, and apply the one two three rule. If we're going to do it ourselves, we have to apply these things our, uh, you know uh, manually. So one point, for example, does not move in the direction one two three. For example, this corner point here then another point cannot move in direction one and two, these two directions. Now notice that when we do this, that means that the entire block can actually hinge about this edge, this edge, and this block can actually uh, revolve about it. Now to fix that, one other corner point, we make it uh, restrain, restrain it in the, in the upward direction, okay? That means that this block can no longer just hinge about that. And so this is three three restraints, two restraints, and one restraints, and therefore the one, two, three rule. Now, this can be done automatically in CATIA. So first, uh, first I'm going to do it automatically in CATIA using the isostatic uh, restraint, and then I'm going to come back and do it myself using the, uh, using the, uh, uh, user defined restraint. Okay, so that's really what uh, I just uh, what I just said is uh, summarized here. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, and do this. Uh, we create a block, very simple. Uh, let's uh, sketch on this. Okay, a block or a rectangle. Uh, let's make the uh, the cross section. Uh, 
Oh, I don't know, maybe uh, 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter. I'm going to do that in inches. How about that? So uh, let me uh, set my units, tools. Uh, length, I'm going to make it inches. Okay. Uh, the force, I'm going to turn it into pounds. And the stress, I'm going to turn it into PSI. Uh, where's the PSI? PSI. Okay, so uh, let's dimension these things, the one inch by one inch. This is going to be one inch. And this is going to be one inch. We exit. And we pad it by uh, 10 inches. Okay, there we are. Okay. Let's make it out of uh, steel. And now we're going to go to generative structure analysis, which means analysis and simulation, generative structure analysis. Katia, with, it's a static problem. Katia automatically uh, uh, suggest a, a mesh of that size. So let me change the rendering here. Uh, well, uh, this is fine, but uh, I'm going to make it, uh, well, just keep it the way it is. That, that's fine. All right. Now, uh, on this end, I'm going to apply 100, uh, 100 pounds, okay? Let's make it, actually, let's make it 500 pounds, okay? 500 pounds uh, and first, I'm going to apply it as, a, as exactly what I just said, 500 pounds, right there, uh, in the direction uh, x minus 500 pounds. And on the other side, and on the other side, I'm going to apply plus 500 pounds. Okay, now, if I solve this thing, it's going to bomb out. You'll see why. Let's, let's try it. It didn't work, right? It bombed out. So, it didn't run, but you can always uh, have an idea of uh, what the cause may be. If you say, show me the deformation, and uh, say uh, animate it, you can see that this is free to move as a rigid body. It's moving as a rigid body, okay? So we have to take that rigid body motion away. I told you this may be in the back of a, of a truck, and the truck, this, this sample may be in the back of a truck, and the truck is, uh, you know, uh, is going in, 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 on the street, okay? Now, uh, let's do this thing automatically using CATIA. So right here, see that? You go to the strains toolbar, the last one, the, uh, the, uh, the first icon is user defined strain, and we're going to do that, we're going to use this thing later on after I'm done with the uh, automatic uh, orthostatic uh, restraint in CATIA. So there it is, this anchor, and it doesn't ask you anything, you don't pick anything. As soon as you say, here's a part, uh, isostatic restraint, that means that it's going to find three points automatically and one point fixing in three direction, one point fixing in two direction, and one point fixing in one direction. And now we're going to run, and there's no problem. Okay. Now, if you look at the stress distribution, when we say stress distribution, and let me change the rendering here, right there. You might say, whoa, wait a minute, what happened? What is going on? Because we have a, a block of, uh, uh, a block of uh, uh, size uh, 
cross section one inch by one inch and we are applying 100 500 pounds on it so this is going to be the the, the stress or one meter stress should be very close to the actual stress which is 500 over one or 500 psi but what's all this red stuff and yellow stuff and things like that well if you put the cursor actually in your blue area you see you you will see it's exactly 500 the reason that things change as you go to the end is that when you apply force, distributed force, it takes the 500 that you gave it and divide it by the number of nodes on the uh, cross section, the number of nodes on the cross section, and at each of those nodes, it puts that particular number. For example, hypothetically, if there were, uh, say, 25 nodes on the cross section, 500 pounds divided by 25 is going to give you uh, a 20, 20 pounds. So it puts 20 pounds on each node. Concentrate the force on each node. Generally speaking, concentrate the forces. You've got to be careful because it can, it can lead into results that you may be surprised, and like here. Now, uh, of course, the, the, the remedy the remedy is instead of force, you can put uh, pressure. Okay, you can put pressure. Now, in fact, to convince you, I'm going to go here. I'm going to delete these two. Delete these two. And I'm going to apply pressure at the end. Pressure on this end, uh, 500 PSI, because it was 500 divided by divided by one square inch this uh, this and the other side i will leave of course the isostatic restraint here I, I, I leave the isostatic restraint here and run it you will see that it's going to be nice and smooth and no color popping up whoa what happened well, don't let us fool you. These colors, the range of colors, look at your legend. Blue is 500, all the way to red is 500. That's because the entire block experiences a stress of 500 PSI. No, no fancy, no uh, phony uh, stresses at the ends. Uh, but uh, I mean, this is uh, because it's done numerically. These may be 500 and 0.1, 500 and 0.01, 500 and 0.02. So there is minor changes in, in deviation from 500, and that's why you get all these weird colors and totally useless. No, that's it. 500, you got 500. Notice that when you apply the force, you got fictitious stresses at these corner points uh, that you did not expect. Now, before I do this thing manually for you, let me show you something. If you go to this isostatic restraint tool uh, icon right there, or, or branch in the, tool, in, in, in the tree, if you go there, right click at the bottom, it says restraint visualization on mesh. If you click on it, it shows you the mesh, and in fact, it shows you the three points that the one, two, three rules are applied. For example, this corner point Notice that three degrees of freedom are set to, to, to equal to zero, therefore it's calm. This corner point, this corner point, two degrees of freedom are set to zero. See, one like that, one like this. And there must be another one on the other side where one is actually set equal to zero. Let's see, is it on this side or is it on that side? Oh, right here, right here in that bottom corner, right there, one degree of freedom. All right, are we good? Now, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, except that I will not use a static restraint. I will use it myself. All right, so let's uh, deactivate this. Let's delete the isostatic restraint. Uh, and uh, where's my mesh? The mesh is displayed, deactivated. Okay, let's use our brain and try to uh, try to do this thing uh, ourselves without a without a reference to what was done in Katia. With okay, so this point, okay, this point, I'm gonna make three 
degrees of freedom equal to zero. User defined strain. The three translations at this point, I just randomly took it, equal to zero. Okay. If I run, this will actually hinge about that point. Let me do that and show you that, in fact, it hinges about that point. Okay. Show me the deformation. Let me reset the scale here. There. Okay, and animate. So you can see that it hinges about that point. Okay. So then we're going to say, all right, let's deactivate this. Now let's take this point and let it not move in the direction up and sideways. Okay, so let's see now. Again, user defined. This point, not to move in the direction uh, uh, Z, direction 3, and direction 2. So we leave direction 1 alone. Okay? And we say, okay. And we're going to run it, and you'll see that it will hinge about that edge. It will move as a rigid body about that edge, as as uh, uh, revolving about it. So there we are. And you can animate it. There's animation right there. Now, to make sure that this won't happen, we take another corner, corner point here and say, don't go up. Okay, so let me deactivate this. So this corner point, do not move up. Run it, this time it will work. You will get 500 everywhere and There we are, change it to material shading, all your 500s are here. Now, when I do this thing, when I do, uh, when I teach these things in, uh, in, in, in class, I don't usually talk about this uh, isostatic restraint, which remember, it was done automatically for you, because uh, it could be that you apply isostatic restraint and you get color but you're not solving your own problem, okay? You're solving a different problem. So it is better to understand the, what is happening uh, in, uh, in, in, in the actual situation. In other words, isostatic restraint is nothing but the CATIA program imposing the one, two, three rule for you, okay? It is better to put some thought behind it and uh, learn what is going on as opposed to, uh, you know, always apply as a static strain and it will run. Let, let, me, let me convince you. Let me convince you why. Uh, so uh, I'm going to delete all of these. Uh, I'm going to delete these restrain. Suppose I gave this problem to students to solve. And well, maybe, maybe they uh, put the pressure only on one side. Okay, so let me delete. Uh, let me just do pressure on one side. How about that? Okay, pressure only on one side, because I did not pay attention, okay? And uh, I didn't put it on the other side. So, uh, isostatic, isostatic restraint. Where is it? Okay. And run it. Okay, let me reset the scale. Okay, this is what happened. This is what happened. So you got color, but uh, it's all nonsense. But you may not know what happened. All right, so uh, that's why I try to avoid uh, using this uh, icon as long as I can. But you have seen some examples, you know how it, what it's designed for. Okay, have fun with it.